Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, April 11, 2018, and here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, and the only thing on the market front is Shanghai and Hang Sang up a little bit. Nikkei's down, down in Europe, down in the United States. Whew. Oil's got a little spike there. Gold came up, back down a little bit, but closed up. And Bitcoin took a little bit of a bounce. Dow closes more than 200 points lower after Trump taunts Russia. Trump said in a tweet, Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because they will be coming nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. This is the President of the United States using this kind of language. What person with dignity would listen to this? Now, the same ones that believed Obama, Bush, and Clinton. He just did it differently. So the market, of course, was upbeat after yesterday when Chinese President Xi said, ah, we're going to renegotiate over there. We're going to ease up on tariffs, protect intellectual properties, load those tariffs on autos, and on and on and on. So the markets went up, and now they're down. This is big what's going on. And all of the media, with very few exceptions, and the mainstream media are pro-going to war against Syria, Russia, and Iran. The editorials are there, the coverage is there, the way it's being set out in the propaganda. So just warning you, because gold prices went up sharply today. They didn't break through that 1360 mark. And then they backed off after the Fed announcement came out about the minutes. And the Fed minutes are that they're going to be raising interest rates at least two more times, and the bet is 25% bet that they'll raise it four times. That's what brought the markets down in gold. So you know the story. The stronger the dollar, the higher the interest rates. At this point, gold prices go lower. However, gold and oil prices went much higher because of the volatility in the Middle East. We've heard Trump, Theresa May, Macron, and the crown prince that's over there in France now meeting Macron, saying they'll join in with the United States and its allies to stop what's going on in Syria. It goes back to our trends when we forecast the top trends of 2018, market crash, mass murder. And the mass murder we were talking about is the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia lining up against Syria, Russia, and Iran. And now that's in place. And again, when you read Trump's quote, you shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. Hey, did Obama quote, I'm really good at killing people. That's not my quote. I guess he enjoyed it. No, but that's different. How about Bush? How about Clinton? How about you with your missile strikes that you bragged about a year ago April? Yeah, 59 of them going into Syria. It's okay to shoot missiles and kill people. Okay to do them cluster bombs and napalms and carpet bombs. Okay to wipe out Mosul and Raqqa and incinerate entire nations. But don't use that chlorine gas. Oh, that's just terrible. 
and all the people buy it. Chlorine gas. So we're talking about World War I. And again, no proof at all. And by the way, the daughter of the ex-Russian spy that was allegedly poisoned with the deadliest poison on earth, Novacek. Oh, she's out of the hospital. Oh, and so too is that cop. He was out a couple of weeks ago that also got it. Oh, and the fathers, if it was that deadly gas, they'd be dead, right? No. That's why they changed the storyline from one chemical killing to another. Again, there's absolutely no proof, and the Russians are asking to send in the agencies into Syria to provide the facts, and the United States is stonewalling it. So it's very important what's going on, and that's why you have a trend alert today that we sent out to put this in perspective. The Trump war will crash the markets. It's an update and a continuation of what we've written before about what's going on. So we're just saying, again, think for yourself, be prepared. Take emergency measures. If nothing happens, great. You didn't lose anything. But if something comes down really heavy, oh, the banks are closed. Oh, Wall Street's closed. Oh, you can't get your money out. Oh, that maybe you had your gold in that safety deposit box. Sorry, you can't get it. You know, we're concerned that there's a, you know, terrorists that have been putting their money in here. And we got to go through everybody's savings, uh, safety deposit boxes to make sure there's no terrorist dough in there. So what we're saying is be prepared. GC's three G's, guns, gold, and a getaway plan. Because if this thing escalates and he, Trump, continues to go after Russia as they are doing, and we go to war with Russia, mwah, kiss it goodbye. It'll be the end of life on earth the way we know it. So going back into some other Economic news, China's factory and consumer inflation in March slows in sign of ebbing economic growth. Very important. Again, when all else fails, war drums beat louder. As home prices rise, strains emerge. This is for the U.S. Roughly one in five conventional mortgage loans made this winter went to borrowers spending more than 45% of their monthly incomes on their mortgage payments and other debts, the highest proportion since the housing crisis. Now, what's going to go on when interest rates go up? The housing market, the commercial markets are going to go down. You're already seeing it. REIT boards feel heat from sinking shares. The FTSE Narit Equity REITs Index has declined 8% in the past 12 months compared to a 13% rise in the S&P 500. So you can see commercial real estate, other real estate, and if this, we go to war, it's going to be the Great Depression all over again, probably worse because the money right now is concentrated in the hands of so few, the personal debt levels are so high, not only in the United States, all over the world, including, of course, the, not only the public debt, the private debt, but also the corporate debt. So, again, what we're saying, prepare for the worst. If the worst doesn't happen and you're prepared, you've lost nothing. If the worst happens, and you weren't prepared, you may lose everything. Think for yourself. Investment into U.S. fell sharply in 2017. After climbing for much of the past two decades, Chinese investment into the U.S. dropped 36% last year. As relations between the two nations cooled, the value of newly announced Chinese acquisitions in the U.S., 
in 2017 dropped by 90% from a year earlier. Okay, you can see how tensions are heating up here. I want to go on to show what's really going on. It's not about poison. It's about money and sickness. And it's the same crazy people that have been leading us to war. Read the book, War's a Racket by General Smedley Butler, the most decorated Marine in history. And he tells you up until that time. U.S. pressures British banks to cut Russian ties. The United States on Tuesday ratcheted up its effort to block Kremlin-linked industries from doing business in the West, warning that British banks will have to sever their relationships with the tycoons if they want continued access to American financial institutions. Political shocks rattle Russian markets. And again, these were put in place based on lies, alleged, suspected chemical attacks, oh, of the former uh, spy and his daughter, which is now in anybody with an open mind, and again, think for yourself, but as far as I see it, this and what's going on in Syria is nothing more than a ton of... That was bullshit. Total. The Russian ruble fell to a 16-month low, and Moscow canceled the bond sale as investors continued to react to U U.S. sanctions and increased geopolitical risks for Moscow. Russian assets have tumbled since Monday after the U.S. announced sanctions against government officials and business magnates, and President Trump directly criticized Moscow for its support of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. How dare you support him when Hillary Clinton said, and Frankenstein Kerry said, and Obama said, and all the rest said, Assad has to go. What right do they have to support them? We'll tell you what to do. Oh, another thing too, as we go on the air, the attack against Syria that Trump said would happen in 24 to 48 hours, he said that on Monday. We're now 48 hours into that. Nothing has happened yet. So, hold on. But of course, the news is, in the United States, all about Zuckerberg. Who needs Facebook? There used to be a thing called MySpace. It went away. What's so important about this thing? Basically, nothing. This is an on-trend opportunity for someone to start a new social media site that isn't Facebook Zuckerberg. And what does he say, the little boy? One of my greatest regrets, he said to the Senate committee on Capitol Hill, in running the company is that we were slow to identify the Russian information operations in 2016. Again, no proof, all lies, and then when you add up, even if there was infiltration, what did they spend, $3.5 billion on the presidential reality show? And a couple of million of nothing. Another little sellout boy. Israel, on high alert, prepares for possible Iranian retaliation after strike on Syrian base. The Israelis have not acknowledged it, but their defense minister, Avdor Lieberman, who I quoted yesterday, said, I don't know who attacked in Syria, but I know one thing for certain. We, we will not allow Iran to set up shop in Syria regardless of the cost. Listen to these madmen. Hey, take a look at this guy. Take a look at your Trump. Take a look at your Bolton. Take a look at your Lindsey Graham. Take a look at your McCain. Take a look at your Clapper. 
What self-respecting human being would pay one ounce of attention to these people rather than denounce them? Countries are cowards. That's who. Tehran threatens Israel over airstrike near Homs. Yep, he said they would get even. Iranians would not remain without a response, senior Iranian foreign official said. I want to go back to Trump. Headline story, target of raids was money paid to hush Trump, front page toilet paper record. This is the childish language they use. Illegal attack dogs seized files could bite his client. Isn't that something? So, Trump is under pressure. They said that after he took the selfie with uh, Alabama Crimson Tide smiling, inside the White House, Mr. Trump furious after the FBI raided his longtime personal lawyer, Michael D. Cohen, spent much of the day brooding and fearful and near what two close people in the West Wing describe as, quote, a meltdown. If that's true, just remember, when all else fails, they take you to war. And this guy's failing. They haven't stopped going after him since the day he got elected, and this is unprecedented, what they're doing now. Yeah, he's fearful, because as I've said, they got enough stuff on Trump from over the years where you could build Mount Everest with all the junk that they have on him. Again, very important. Either join the march to war or take the path to peace. It's your choice. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.